Hello, hello, and welcome back to another video. How you folks doing today? I am on my way from Soho or Houston Street, south of Ham south of Houston Street versus north of Houston Street. So Soho versus Noho. I think that's what it all means. This is where all the happenings are going. I'm not sure what's going on, but there's always something buzzing about in Soho. And uh, if you're fortunate enough to ever be down here and visit here, you can pop into some of the designer stores here that sell jeans for $1,200 a pair. That's something to see. Anyway, folks, welcome, welcome. Good to have you with me on this journey. This is promising to be a grueling journey. I'm headed from Soho to Central Park. So that's a couple of miles and some traffic. Hoping for safety and efficiency. This is Horatio Park. I've been here before. Here's Sixth Avenue and I'll be taking this up I used to play basketball here in Horatio Park on that court right there. A lot of good times here when I was in high school. It's pretty close to my high school, Lab High School, which we might see up ahead. No, we won't see it because we're on 6th Avenue. But if we were on 8th Avenue, then we might. But not here on 6th. I'm yielding to the crosswalk light as I always instruct my viewers to do for safety. Yeah, so I waited. I gave the right of way to those who had the light. You understand that? Make sure you do that. So today let's talk about in motion. I'm going to give a not super in-depth breakdown of in motion like I did with Leaper Kim because I don't know that much about them like I do with Leaper Kim. Leaper Kim makes my favorite wheel, the Veteran Sherman. In Motion, however, is another company that makes scooters and electric unicycles, and they're a little more corporate. They're a little more organized and well-designed and invested, I think. They have more money in their R&D than other, than other wheel companies do, so. I can hear that engine purring. Looks like he's in the process of renewing his bumper, which means he probably had a collision, which means he's a somewhat of a risk on the road. With all that liability, I want to be out of the way. He collides with people. Oh, no thanks. I will move. Um, he's also looking, it looks like he's driving very aggressively and trying to squeeze in and pass people by force, even though there's traffic up ahead, so... When you see a driver like that, just steer clear. Give him some room, get away, let him do his thing far away from you. That's my, uh, that's my advice, Mike's riding experience advice. And keep your camera on and pointed. Okay, my nose is itching. I love this big double XL helmet because when I have a nose itch or an ear itch, I can always find room in through the visor. Whoa to actually get my finger in there and itch the needed itch. So, that's one of the advantages of having a double XL helmet. And it slides right on. I hate helmets that fit too tight and give you a headache because with my hair and everything, sometimes it'll press against certain pressure points on my skull. And it's like, no, 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 no. I need plenty of room in there to breathe. I can feel the breeze in my helmet. I like that. I like having a big helmet where the chin strap is still on there, nice and tight, and the helmet is firm. It's by no means loose. Maybe I just do have a really big head. I, I don't know. <laughs> but, um, double XL for the win. Also, I put on a helmet liner, which is kind of like a cap you put on your whole head, like a hat almost, but it's really thin. But it's really moisture absorbent, and it keeps you cool. And it it's like creates a barrier between your head and the helmet. To me, I love that. I, I feel like you, everyone, it's like wearing underwear under your pants. It's like, or an undershirt under your dress shirt. I feel like everyone should not be 
naked under their helmet with just skin to helmet contact. It just seems weird to me nowadays. So I'm definitely uh, on the team undergarment. <laughs> anyway, in motion, the other company that makes electric unicycles. That is one of the four big companies. Let me just name the four real quick before I talk about in motion. By the way, in motion is one word. I N M O T I O N in motion. Um, before I talk about in motion, the other companies are Leaper Kim, Big Ode, and King Song. That's the four companies: in motion, Leaper Kim, Big Ode, and King Song. Big Ode is B E G O D E, and King Song is two words: King, like the King of France, and Song, like I like to sing a song. King Song. All great companies, all four of them great companies on the cutting edge of making wheels, which are my favorite toys and mo means of transportation, modes of transportation, better than scooters, cars, better than bikes. To me, bikes, uh, the downfall of bicycles is the bike seat. It's horrible, it's bad for your health, it's painful, it's the worst thing imaginable, and I am not a advocate of bicycles, of bicycles, at least not for myself. I know millions of people ride bikes and love bikes. So that's, you know, I, I won't knock that. I get it, you like bikes, fair enough. And bikes are easier to ride and all that. I get it. They're, they've been around for a long time. They're not just gonna disappear because EUCs came along. I get it. That said, In Motion, King Song, Leaper Kim, and Big Ode. Big Ode was also known as Gotway at one point. And I should make an honorary, honorable mention to uh, Extreme Bull, which is the fifth company, but I don't because they are a subsidiary of Big Ode. So they're not really a fifth company, they're like the four and a half company. Or just put them under Big Ode. Because it belongs to Big Ode from my understanding, it's not its own company. I don't know why they have an offshoot company. So uh, I guess it is what it is. So four companies it is. But Extreme Bull does make an awesome wheel called the Commander. And I'm a big fan of that wheel. Even though I don't like Big Ode in general, nor Extreme Bull in general. Okay, that's out of the way. In Motion, what's their wheel lineup? What does it look like? In Motion has the smallest wheel they make up to the biggest wheel they make. It's about five or six different wheels. Let's start with the beginning. The smallest, cheapest wheel, the V5. It comes in a few flavors. The V5, the V5F, F as in Frank. And all that means it's got a little bit more battery if it has the letter F or S, S as in Sam, after the model number. But the same basic chassis still is the same. If it's a V5, it's a V5. So it's the same sort of look and design and everything. It just might be a little heavier and have a little more battery in it if it's the F class or the S class. Now there is no V5S, it's just V5 and V5F. And it's a very small wheel, it's a 14 inch, super slow, 12 mile per hour wheel, roughly. Uh, don't quote me on that, it might be 11.5 or something like that. And to me it's the perfect wheel to get for your daughter. It's about four or five hundred dollars used, and it's about eight hundred dollars new, and it's worth it. It's a great starter, beginner, learner wheel or wheel for your daughter or son. Anywhere from the age of four up to the age of about 12. I think the V5F is a great investment because you can keep it around the house for anyone who wants to borrow or learn on one of your wheels. You don't have to worry about the monetary depreciation of a wheel getting scraped and scratched and destroyed in the process. V5F, okay, then there's the V... 8F and the, well the V8 which is the next step up wheel it's slightly larger as you would imagine and it looks slightly faster and it's worth about a thousand dollars if I'm not mistaken maybe maybe twelve hundred and that one does come with the S V5F V5S I'm sorry V8S and V8F and V8 those are three wheels right there the S is the higher of the three the F is the middle the Frank one and then the uh, regular one, which is just a cheap, uh, low-end, low-battery model. Okay. And then we get the next step up, which is slightly larger. But again, same sort of basic principle in terms of the design. These wheels are water-friendly. 
but not waterproof. They do not have a built-in speaker for music, from my understanding. So these three wheels are their small sort of entry-level wheels. The V10 is a great wheel because it can go 20-something miles an hour, 22 maybe. Or is that the V8S? V8S can go 22, yes. And the V10, oh, the V10 and the V10F and the V10, they don't have a V10S. So it's just V10 and V10F. Those go somewhere in the range of 25 miles per hour and give you about 30 to 40 miles of range. I'm kind of guessing over here, but um, I would stake on it zero dollars that I'm right, but I'm pretty confident it's around that much range. Even if on paper it's a lot more, even if on paper it's a lot more, I'm just going to get away from there because it's so loud I can't even hear myself talk and I can't, uh, I don't want to get a copyright. Go ahead. Um, anyway, what was I saying? So the V10, yeah, the v, to me the V10 is the first grown man wheel that you should own if you want to own a wheel for a long time. And uh, it's not the crazy rider's wheel. It's not the street wheeling maniac wheel. It's just a good wheel that's about on par with your average scooter, with your average $800 or $1,000 scooter. 25 miles per hour is a bit faster than your average 18 mile per hour scooter or 15 mile per hour scooter at that. So it's a, it's a good wheel. It's a grown man's wheel, as I like to call it. Um, reliable, robust, enjoyable, and there. But you're going to want to upgrade further. What else does InMotion have? InMotion then has, after the V5, V8, V, V10, it has the V11, the first suspension wheel. It's a tall, fancy looking wheel. It's a whole different class of wheels from the other three because it looks completely different. Um, and it's got 31 mile per hour top speed and it entered into the $2,000 price range, give or take. Some companies sell them for $1,850, some sell them for $2,200, but I, I price it at about $2,000 and at about $1,500 used. So V11, great wheel, suspension wheel. What else do they have? Then they have the V12, which is not a suspension wheel. But it's a very rich, full line wheel. It's got a touch screen for the controls. It's got uh, yeah, a big screen with color for the speedometer while you're riding. It has a kickstand. The V11 also has a kickstand, kind of a similar kickstand. It's like a wire frame thingy that bends down, that spins over on an axle. And then you can rest the wheel on it. And that's just so that your wheel doesn't fall over on the floor. It's not a very tough, well-built kickstand. It's kind of flimsy, but if you just set it down nice and easy, it will not fall over unless someone hits it or walks by it and a gust of wind blows it over. Same applies for the V12. So V11, V12. The V12 is a supreme wheel. It's a 16-inch wheel. The V11 is an 18-inch wheel. So yeah, they regressed a little there. They made it a little smaller in terms of the tire diameter and whatnot, but they did also make the v12 much faster that wheel goes 43 miles 43 miles per hour and so uh, you can uh, bet that that's one of the faster wheels especially for a small wheel for a small wheel like the v12 to go 43 miles per hour is ridiculous in fact some might say too fast for that small of a wheel that it gets unsteady and unstable so, wouldn't recommend going the actual full 43 on that. That's the high speed version. There's two V12s. There's the V12 high speed and there's the V12 high torque. The high torque is a little faster with acceleration, but tops out at 37 miles per hour. And the V12 high speed also has really good acceleration, but not quite as good, especially not on hills and inclines and against the wind as the cousin the high torque version so it's a little weaker in the sense but it does go 43 miles per hour and like i said it has pretty good acceleration because it's a small powerful wheel and so i would go with the v12 high speed rather than the v12 high torque if i had to choose one i do understand that the high torque one is about 200 dollars more for some reason even though i would choose the other one even if they were the same price. So they are both 20, uh, 2100 and 2300 give or take, depending on the retailer you're buying from. Uh, the, is that it? Is that all of the InMotion wheels? 
No, sir. No, sir. There is one more wheel that InMotion makes, and it was recently released, and it recently broke new records in the electric unicycle game. And that is the V13 Challenger. That's right. The massive, monstrous, suspension-packed V13 Challenger is the biggest wheel weighing in at 115 pounds approximately, which is almost, I want to say double the weight, maybe not fully double, but almost double the weight of the wheel right under it. Right, the V12 is maybe 70, 60, 70 pounds. The V13 is about 115 pounds, so if you do the math. Um, <laughs> it's a great wheel, very reliable. It's got a heavy frame, suspension, <laughs> all the bells and whistles. Um, goes 55 miles per hour. Now, of course, because it's huge, it doesn't accelerate that quickly. It's a big, slow Cadillac style car, right? Or wheel. Uh, beep, 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 beep. Yeah, so um, it's a, definitely a formidable wheel. It's a cruiser. It's not a long distance wheel, though, believe it or not, because the battery is kind of small for a wheel that big. So you don't get a lot of range. But it's a cruiser as long as it's running <coughs> for whatever short distance you're riding it on. But it's not a wheel you want to take to a wheel meeting with 100 wheel riders because you are going to run out of battery before everyone else. You are going to pull over on the side of the road and plan your trip accordingly where you don't get to make it to the finish line with everyone else. But the whole time you are with everyone, you're going to be riding a gigantic, comfortable, sporty cruiser of a wheel. The V13 Challenger. Okay, so what do I make of InMotion and their wheels? I think InMotion is the company that puts in the most effort and, and care and money into their research and development. They're the ones trying to make electric unicycles mainstream with their attention to detail on design and safety. They're developing all kinds of new patented technologies to make the batteries safer. They do the, they do the best job with making the wheel design plastic sleek and very unique. They're definitely creating custom everything for their wheel from the motherboard to the wiring to the paneling. Everything is designed from the ground up with InMotion and their wheels look really good. They're really slim. They're really your apple of electric unicycles, although they're nowhere near the ingenuity that uh, they're not sh displaying nearly as much ingenuity as Apple as far as groundbreaking technology and everything. It's just slightly better than the other companies. But again, they care about design, you can tell. They really try to make their wheels look very nice with the LED lights on the uh, V12 and the kickstands they've devised and the speakers. The V12, by the way, has built-in Bluetooth speakers, which a lot of people compliment. They say that the sound is really loud and really fun. It's really good. I don't think many of their other wheels, I think maybe the V10 has speakers, although I'm not sure about that. I have to look into that. But um, I think their wheels are sleek and nice. I think, however, they have durability issues. The hard plastic, the shiny plastic that they use, um, if you crash, it, looks, it cracks easily. Um, it needs to be rebuilt. I, I know they've had issues with motherboards on the V12 where... The board was causing cutouts unexpectedly and they had to release several new motherboards to address the issue and the issue still wasn't resolved well. The V13 also had a cutout scandal issue not too long ago where it cut out unexpectedly and injured a rider. So V12, the uh, in-motion company does have some quality control improvements to make. but. Otherwise, really great company. You can definitely sink some money into some of their products with confidence and security. And uh, I think that, uh, hey, I think that you can do so with confidence and you'll enjoy them. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Have a great day. Goodbye.